Autocorrelation function and power spectral density are important properties of a random process, especially uh, when the random process is ergodic or at least a white sense stationary process. Uh, in this video, uh, we will take a simple example of an ergodic process, which is a randomly phased sinusoid, and uh, take the autocorrelation function for this particular random process and then also uh, see what the power spectral density of this random process is and also establish the relationship between the autocorrelation function and power spectral density and uh, in the last part we would also uh, verify some properties of the power spectral density. So to begin with what is uh, a randomly phased sinusoid? So, a uh, randomly phased sinusoid is basically a sinusoidal function whose phase is a random variable. So, the phase phi is a random variable that is uniformly distributed in the interval 0 to 2 pi. And uh, such a random signal is encountered in uh, communications quite regularly because uh, when a signal is transmitted after modulation, uh, it, it undergoes a random amount of delay. Uh, in the transit time between the transmitter and the receiver and therefore it has uh, some random phase shift uh, you know the, the received carrier signal therefore has uh, a random amount of phase shift so the phase phi is uh, a random variable that is uniformly distributed in this interval 0 to 2 pi so uh, what we'll do is uh, without proof without any uh, derivation of proof i will just be giving the uh, autocorrelation function for the randomly phased sinusoid. The proof of itself uh, will be given in a different video. Uh, but uh, here, uh, the purpose of this video is just to uh, establish the relationship between autocorrelation function and power spectral density and uh, then uh, verify certain properties of the power spectral density. So, uh, for such a random process, uh, which happens to be an ergodic process, uh, the autocorrelation function is uh, given as follows. So this is the autocorrelation function for the randomly phased sinusoid computed uh, between two time instants t1 and t2 and uh, that is uh, uh, given by this expression where we see that the autocorrelation function uh, depends on the time difference or the time separation between t1 and t2 which we denote as tau. So, in this expression, we have uh, the variable tau as the time separation between t1 and t2. So, now that means that the autocorrelation function for the randomly phased sinusoid uh, depends on the time separation between t1 and t2 or not on the absolute values of t1 and t2 themselves. Next, we will uh, compute the power spectral density of the randomly phased sinusoid. Uh, by using its autocorrelation function and uh, if you may recall the power spectral density gives us the uh, power distribution in each of the frequency components that are present in the signal uh, or in the random process that is. Now for that uh, to establish the relationship between uh, the autocorrelation function and power spectral density we will use the fact that uh, the randomly phased sinusoid is an ergodic process. And uh, since the randomly phased sinusoid is ergodic, the autocorrelation function and the power spectral density are a Fourier transform pair. That means we could compute the uh, autocorrelation function of this randomly phased sinusoid by taking the Fourier transform of the uh, autocorrelation function. And this relationship uh, is called as the weiner kinschein theorem. So let us put that uh, mathematically. So we have the power spectral density GV of f uh, to be defined as the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function Rv of tau and we have written Rv of t1 t2 as Rv of tau since uh, for the randomly phased sinusoid the autocorrelation function is a function of the time difference tau which is t1 minus t2. So by taking the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function we could get the power spectral density of the randomly phased sinusoid. So we can say that uh, the power spectral density GV of F is the Fourier transform of 
a square by 2 cosine omega naught tau. Now again, uh, we are not going to go into the mathematics of this uh, Fourier transform today, but we can uh, use our basic results for the Fourier transform of a cosine function and uh, from that we can compute the uh, power spectral density uh, for this particular case. So we will use this result uh, that the Fourier transform of uh, A cosine 2 pi f naught t is uh, these uh, impulses at f equal to f naught and f equal to minus f naught having an amplitude which is half of the amplitude of the cosine wave, right? So the same result can be applied to this because we see quite uh, that these two expressions are quite similar except, except that uh, uh, the amplitude instead of a it's a squared by 2 over here and uh, the variable instead of tau it's t, right? So uh, the result of the Fourier transform is going to be uh, analogous to this. So uh, by using this uh, result we can now compute and write the expression for the power spectral density of our randomly phased sinusoid. So we can write the power spectral density GV of f as uh, a square by 4 delta of f minus f naught plus a square by 4 delta of f plus f naught. So that's the expression for the power spectral density of the randomly phased sinusoid. So basically it has an impulse at uh, frequency f equal to f naught and another impulse at the frequency f equal to minus f naught uh, having uh, both of them having an amplitude uh, of uh, a, a square by 4. So we can now go on to plot the power spectral density of the randomly phased sinusoid and uh, later on we will uh, verify the properties of uh, power spectral density in general by using this as an example. Uh, the proof of this uh, result uh, for computing the Fourier transform of a sinusoidal function uh, is available in a separate video on my channel. So those who are interested they could uh, watch that result and understand it from my other video. Uh, but for now the focus here in this particular video is to uh, explore the uh, properties of the power spectral density and verify them uh, using the uh, power spectral density of, of the randomly phased sinusoid. So uh, we have now plotted the, the uh, power spectral density uh, for the randomly phased sinusoid which is uh, basically an impulse at frequency f naught and another impulse at frequency minus f naught both having an amplitude of a squared by 4 as we see in this expression. So it's a delta function at f naught and a delta function at minus f naught with amplitudes a squared by 4 which is exactly what we have plotted here in this particular graph. So now we can proceed to uh, verify certain properties of the power spectral density function. The first property is that the power spectral density will be non-negative for all frequency values. So that means GV of f is always greater than or equal to zero. Uh, what that means is since the power spectral density uh, represents the power distribution of the different frequency components, so uh, it indicates how much power is present in each of the frequency components present in the signal. So therefore, uh, the power present in the signal can be zero or some positive value, but it can never be a negative value. So there is some power present or a frequency component is present in the signal or it's not present. So therefore, if the frequency component is present in the signal, then it will have some positive power. And if it is not present in the signal, it will have zero powers but never will it be a negative value and power obviously cannot be negative. So uh, that's the first property of power spectral density that uh, the power spectral density will be non-negative for all values of f though. So that's for all frequencies f. And what we note here from the power spectral density representation is that now, uh, all the frequency components which are shown here have a non-negative value. So we have a squared by 4 at f naught and a squared by 4 at minus f naught. So uh, the value of gv of f is uh, positive or zero 
for all frequencies but there is never a negative value right so that's the first property of the power spectral density the second property of power spectral density is that uh, when we integrate the power spectral density over the entire frequency range that should give us the total power of the signal that makes sense because the power spectral density represents the power distribution in each of the frequency components so if we add up the power distribution of all the uh, frequency components present in the signal that should give us the total power in the signal so uh, we can verify that as well let's put it down first so uh, mathematically put the uh, uh, second property is basically the integration of the power spectral density over the entire frequency range should give us the uh, total power in the signal and uh, clearly when we integrate this across the entire frequency range there is only uh, two non-zero values one at minus f naught and another one at plus f naught so when we integrate this that simply becomes equal to uh, a square by 4 plus a square by 4 that should give us a square by 2 which is the total average power of the randomly phased sinusoid uh, denoted by uh, V of t a cosine omega naught t plus phi. So uh, we can uh, directly compute the uh, power of this particular signal. It has an amplitude a and it's a cosine wave so uh, the power of the signal is simply uh, a by root 2 the RMS value a by root 2 the whole square let me write the power so power of V of T is the RMS value V RMS squared so we can write it as V RMS squared which is a by root 2 the whole square which is a square by 2 which is the power we have computed from the uh, power spectral density okay by integrating the power spectral density so we get the uh, same value a square by 2 which we have also verified directly by computing the power of the uh, randomly phased sinusoid itself so uh, the proper second property also stands verified that the integral of the power spectral density gives us the uh, total power of the signal in this case uh, of the random process and the third property of power spectral density that we verify is that uh, the power spectral density is an even function so property number three says that uh, power spectral density GV of F is an even function that is GV of minus F is equal to GV of F and clearly from the plot of the power spectral density we can see that the uh, power spectral density has even symmetry. So uh, what we have at ma uh, at minus f naught is a mirror image of what is available at plus f naught. So it's an even function, and uh, the, therefore this property also stands verified that the power spectral density is an even function. And this property arises from the fact that the autocorrelation function is uh, real and even. So uh, autocorrelation function. Uh, this property stems from the fact that the autocorrelation function Rv of tau is real uh, and even. Okay, and since the power spectral density is the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function Rv of tau, uh, for a real and even function, its Fourier transform is also an even function, and that is what we see here. Since uh, the power spectral density has been computed as the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function, 
which is really an event the power spectral density is also an event function and just to recall uh, rv of tau is uh, a square by 2 cosine omega naught tau so it's basically a cosine function the autocollision function is a cosine function and cosine as we know is a real function and also an even function and therefore its Fourier transform uh, which gives us the power spectral density in this case uh, is also an even function so we have uh, seen the expression for the autocorrelation function for a randomly phased sinusoid and also the expression for its uh, power spectral density and uh, given that the uh, uh, that the randomly phased sinusoid is an ergodic function, is, is an ergodic uh, process, uh, the power spectral density happens to be the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function. And uh, after that, we have also uh, verified uh, three properties of the uh, power spectral density. Now, however, uh, in this video, I have not gone into the details of the, um, of the proofs of each of the uh, expressions. Uh, these are available in my separate videos and uh, for those who are interested uh, they can uh, check the other videos to get these proofs uh, but here the purpose is to just uh, verify uh, the properties of uh, the power spectral density by using a simple example uh, in this case uh, which is a randomly phased sinusoid it has a very simple uh, representation of the autocorrelation function and uh, therefore it becomes easier to verify these properties. Uh, a final property that we will also verify is the fact that uh, if the random process is periodic, uh, then the autocorrelation function also becomes periodic. Okay, And uh, that is something we can check directly from this expression. So since we have uh, the autocorrelation function, uh, Rv of tau as a cosine function and uh, we know that cosine is a periodic function and uh, that means that uh, our random process which is a cosine function with uh, a random phase uh, its autocorrelation function is also a cosine function and therefore the autocorrelation function is also uh, periodic with the same period as the random process itself so uh, we can state that if the random process is periodic then the autocorrelation function is also periodic with the same period. So as has been stated here, since our random process is periodic, okay, the random process V of t is periodic, therefore its autocorrelation function, or V of tau, is also periodic with the same period. An implication of this is that uh, if, the, if a particular function is uh, periodic, uh, then its Fourier transform is going to be discrete. So since the autocorrelation function is a periodic function, its Fourier transform, which is the power spectral density, uh, has to be discrete, and that is what we clearly observe here. Okay, The power spectral density that we have here is a discrete uh, function of frequency. So that stems from the fact that uh, the autocorrelation function is periodic, since the random process itself is periodic. So that's the uh, fourth property of the power spectral density uh, which arises in this particular case uh, from the fact that uh, the autocorrelation function is uh, periodic. So the power spectral density is discrete. So finally we have uh, this property uh, that since the autocorrelation function of the randomly phased sinusoid is periodic, its Fourier transform, which is nothing but the power spectral density, is a discrete function of frequency.